Okay, this is Stu. We're going back in the day, and we've got Mason Hellcat. How's it going, Mason? Hello. Hello, Stu. Hello, listeners. Hello. Hello. Great All right. to be here, Stu. Great to um, be in your company, in your presence. Oh, thank you. And it's great to be in yours. Haven't seen you for a while. Oh, thanks. Yeah, it's, um, it's fun. It's good to be back here in the uh, studios of TLC. Yeah. Beautiful building, isn't it? I love the old, pl- the old, the old girl. Yeah. So we're recording this in the uh, building that I do my radio show. Um, so if there's a little bit of background music, it's bleeding through from the from the uh, broadcasting studio, and hopefully it won't be enough to get me pulled down because of mm. copyright. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Should we keep it secret where you're recording from? Should, have you said that you're from a hidden bunker under your house? Should I? Should, I, mm. should we go back and? No, I, I haven't actually. I haven't sort of alluded to any sort of. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, we're we're. At, I record from the Doomsday Bunker in Norway. Right. Yeah. 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 Where yeah, um yeah. apparently all the all the seed stock yeah, is starting the, yeah, to fail because yeah. of global warming. So. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that insane? Yeah. That was our fail safe. It was, mm. and our fail safe is. Yeah, our fail safe is dying. So Mason gets sent beer. Oh, well, I used to. Hasn't happened. Oh, well, no, it has happened recently. But um, no, I used to get sent it a lot more often because I started. Uh, reviewing for this um, magazine that was attached to a business that I used to work at a long, long time ago called Charter Magazine. It goes specifically out to uh, accountants. And there's like a 20,000 reader membership per month. And anyway, they said, do you want to do um, beer reviews? And I said, great. So I put that word out to um, breweries saying that, um, you know, I'm a beer reviewer. I, I'm, I write for a magazine, I didn't tell them which magazine, um, that has a uh, 20,000 uh, readership per month. And breweries were like, oh, sweet, yeah, we'll send you a six-pack, we'll send you a case, we'll send you a couple of beers. And suddenly I had all this beer turning up on my doorstep. And um, so uh, I was knocking out the reviews as, as quick as they were coming in uh, and taking it very seriously. And uh, and then that, that gig sort of ended. But um, I post up a lot of um, photos of beer on Instagram and as a result, I've had a couple of breweries just contact me out of the, out of the blue. They probably do it to hundreds of beer people, and say, "Can we send you some beer so you can um, review. So you review it and put up photos and stuff?" So yeah, so it still kind of works. But so you're kind of a, you're not doing it for the magazine anymore. It's just exclusively for Instagram. Yeah. Exactly. So does that make you an influencer? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've got a, I've got a thousand followers. Look at me. I'm... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one day when I when I make it to twenty four thousand followers or something like that, and I'm actually, you know, people are actually listening to what I say, then I, I'll consider myself an influencer. But okay, <laughs> I think I've got a long way to go. Yeah, I have enough trouble influencing my offspring. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, <laughs> alone yeah. people that I don't know. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I read you. I read you. It's hard. <laughs> so, as far as beer goes, like, what what's your sort of personal? Uh, Oh, go to like you know yeah. are you one of these guys that likes a beer that you can chew or uh, a beer that sort of borders on shandy or yeah, like uh, uh, I suppose like it depends on it depends on the you know the time of the day what I've been up to how active I've been that sort of thing if I've been out lawn mowing for two hours then anything cold and wet I can just throw back so I'm gonna throw back whatever's in the fridge and you know within reason like I'll still I still have my limits I'm not gonna crack open a 4x but, yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> sorry to the Forex uh, fans, but uh, you know, uh, and then so, but if you know, I'll drink it, I'll drink anything cold wet. But then I like to sit back and I like to sample a good IPA, a good IPA is good, but then I'll turn and have a nice stout on a cold winter's night or a okay. porter or something. So, would you crack a stout after mowing the lawn? No, probably Ever. not. No, <laughs> even if it was the only thing in the fridge. Oh, well, yeah, maybe, yeah, maybe okay. if it was anything in the fridge, yeah, 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 <laughs> just doesn't quite refresh me as much as it needs to. What about um? <laughs> I find it funny. Like I've I've done a few um Europe, USA yeah. trips. Yeah. And Fosters. Everybody yeah. drinks Fosters over yeah. there. And you know, the only time ever, still to this day, that I tried Fosters was during the 2000 Olympics, and uh, in Sydney, my local pub that I follow on Instagram, and it hasn't changed in the 20-odd years that I've been going there since, which is excellent because it's right in the heart of the CBD and it's still just a pub. What pub's that? It's the uh, Occidental Hotel. It's a. Um, okay. It's still got the same carpet, the same uh, bar tables. I'm sure the same bartenders. I'm not. So it's a classy place. It has car- yeah. It has carpet. <laughs> yeah, it's got carpet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's got cigarette burns from when you were still allowed to smoke in there. <laughs> um, and during the 2000 Olympics, they had two dollar schooners of Fosters. And I was like, oh, I've been warned off Fosters all my life, but 
no, you know what? I'm going to try two dollars. I can't go past a two dollars schooner. And yeah, it was pretty bad, but two dollars, you can't turn up. You can't turn past. I'd drink anything for two dollars. I'd even drink four X for two dollars. I don't look. I've only. I think I've only ever drunk Fosters overseas. Yeah. yeah. Well, no, I haven't. I must have drunk it in Australia because myself and a, and a couple of other people have sort of said it tastes a bit better right. overseas than right. what it does in Australia. <laughs> okay. It must be a slightly different recipe well, or okay, different okay. water from a different country or something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, but, um, yeah. um, look, I'd, I'd give it a go. I'd give it a go over there. <laughs> if someone said, try this, it's good. I tried, um, <laughs> I tried one beer in New York called Bronzed Aussie. Oh, okay. Is that and an Australian beer? No, it's an American Australian <laughs> beer. Right. Okay. And it, the play, I was. It was my second day in New York. Yeah. And I'd spent a fair bit of money on the first day, and it's like, right, tomorrow I'm not going to spend any money. I'd walked around town all around Manhattan all day. Yeah. And I've sort of, I was sort of heading north south, and I looked down this street, and it's like, Aust. And then I've crossed the road and looked back, and it's like, the Australia Hotel or Australis oh, Hotel or whatever right it was. On, so right I'm, I'm going to go down and check it out. Yeah. And. I don't drink very much. Yeah. And I had a, I went in there and had a, a Cooper's Green. Yeah. That was kosher. I call it <laughs> right, the label. Okay. okay. <laughs> and that was probably the first time, that was the first time since um, drinking Cooper's Red um, at the Bondi Pavilion yeah. in the in the 90s. Yeah, right. When we were, I think we might have been under the influence of psychedelics right. at the time. <laughs> and it was like, oh, it was really hot. It's like, oh, let's get a beer. Went there and it was just like, oh my God, Cooper's Red. And it wasn't cold. Yeah. And yeah. it was just like. <laughs> or was it? You'll never no, know. No, <laughs> it definitely wasn't cold. And it was just like, oh my God, it was torturous chewing this, chewing this Cooper's Red with yeah. like all the bits in it. Oh yeah. Yeah. On psychedelics yeah. in the yeah. sun. It was just like. Worst case scenario, <laughs> and you but, so you never looked back to uh, Coopers. No, I never that. looked back. But yeah. I, you know, f- for for my Aussiness, I thought, yeah, okay, I'll yeah. have a Coopers, and then because yeah. and it was so weird. The chicks like, good day when I <laughs> when I walk in there because like they, that's so what they have to say to every person right, that comes in. And obviously, put on Aussie accent. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah but, and yeah. then she'd just go off yeah. and speak in her American accent. Yeah. It turned out that the manager was from Bondi Junction. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's an odd connection. Yeah. Well, you know, he must have been an Aussie, <laughs> lobbed over to New York. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm a barman. <laughs> Ended up getting a job in this place, becoming the manager, I think, pure, purely because of his nationality. Yeah, right. I drank I drunk a couple of Coopers, which yeah. is usually twice as much as what I normally drink. So yeah. I normally only ever have one beer. Right. And um, I'm like, what's the story with this bronze dozzy? Yeah. And he's like, put it this way, mate. <laughs> Nobody from Australia who tries it ever has a second one. <laughs> okay, right. <laughs> and, and it was fucking disgusting. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> um, oh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it was disgusting. Yeah. But um, wow. So, and uh, on the menu in there, did you notice if they had? Because I've been to um, the Aussie Steakhouse a couple of times. Or Outback Steakhouse. Outback, Outback yeah, Steakhouse. Yeah, yeah. Okay. A times over here in Australia. Yep. And um, and I imagine it's fairly similar in in America. Uh, the the menu, but it's you know it's got things like um, fair dinkum wings and. <laughs> You know, Rissoles? Yeah, <laughs> probably, probably. <laughs> and uh, and so yeah, so I, did, you know, did they have a, a food menu that had similar things? Uh, to, Wombat fries. To be honest, I can't remember. Yeah, but um, that it was the big thing that they had up on the board. That I think, I think I was there in around uh, May or something, and the big thing was you know come to the Australia. <laughs> come to the Australia pub and watch the UEFA Cup. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> <laughs> We don't really get into that <laughs> like in Australia. Yeah. If it's the league, yeah. that's a different <laughs> that's a different story. But I think they might just think Sport Australia Yeah. Get a, yeah whatever yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, but um <laughs> No. Yeah, so um mm. So what was the last beer that you, you got sent? Uh well actually I've I've been um sampling some um good beers from this brewery. I think they're based in Sydney called Yulies, Yulies Brewery. Okay. It's not a it's not a plug for them, but they're 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 a good brewery and um they brought some beers down here to our region. Okay. And um I managed to snaffle a couple. Okay. Um yeah. was that when the food thing was on downtown? Uh that no, th- this was just a, a sales rep that was passing through to um okay. to try and get his beer into some of the local pubs and bars and Okay. And so how did you so. manage to hook up with him? Oh, um, I think just through just through uh, work, they um, okay. we were lo- we were looking at different beers at over at Patero. We okay. were looking at different beers, and uh, when he, I, I just sort of um, 
he he let me know he was coming to the area and I said, Great, yeah, cool, I'm keen to catch up with you and Cool. Yeah. So then Did you do homebrew? No, I failed at homebrew so many times that I just figure it's not worth it. Okay. I've got some very good um homebrew friends that do a great job. But um I'm yeah, I can't uh I can't even compete. I've had yeah, it's just it's been horrible. <laughs> I've given up on all of my brews. Like, I don't know. I thought they they some of those um some of those ones where you can buy like you can buy a can and, yeah, and, and it, yeah. it's, it's, it tells you what it's going to be. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah that, that's what I'd use. That's what I'd use. It's supposed okay, to be so pool, it's supposed to be foolproof. Pool. Okay, and um, and I fucked it up every time. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> I remember when I was a kid, my dad used to make a homebrew, and they used to yeah. make it from scratch. They'd have these garbage bin, like yeah. big plastic garbage yeah. bins, and they'd be stirring stuff up, and his yeah. mate would jump the back fence. Yep. One night they'd be doing one thing and then it'd have to sit for oh, a... Oh, yeah. Like, um, pioneers of homebrew. Before they had cans and things like that readily available in your supermarket, Yeah, you yeah. know, there were guys like, like your dad that were out there actually, you know, putting in the hard yards to, to make it themselves, which is just incredible. Like there's, there's companies now, I, I, I saw one when I was back visiting Sydney that you can actually go there and, and mm. lay your homebrew down. Yeah. And it's like, it's climate controlled building where that, yeah. where you can do it all. Yeah. And See, I like the idea of that. I like the idea of going and saying, "Well, I like that flavour." Push a button, drops it into the tank. I like that flavour. Push a button, drops it into the tank. So I don't have to do any, uh, you know, yeah, right. physical. <laughs> <laughs> it's just uh, you know, you can just put together your flavours and mix it up, and and boom, you got beer. So when did you first? When was the first time you drank beer and got pissed? Um. It's, I don't know, it's a difficult question because um, I remember uh, growing up, I was never one of those kids that like would have it in their teen years, you know, sneak out and have some at parties and yep. stuff like that. I was a bit of a goody two-shoes, I suppose, in that sense. Um, and uh, so when it came to my 18th birthday, my brother bought me a six-pack of Heineken and he goes, here you go, happy birthday, brother. And uh, I don't think he called me brother. I think he called me Mason. <laughs> but um, <laughs> here you go, brother. Uh, and so I tried. I, I cracked the lid off one, had a quick sip, and I was like, oh, this is horrible. Like, I'd, I'd sort of smelt beer, and I'd had little sips from mum and dad's drinks, but I tasted it. I was like, this is horrible. I'm, I'm not drinking this. I said, no, nah, I don't want it. I said, you can have it. He goes, ah, oh, thanks for that. Took it and ran Older off. Brother? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so he was – I think that was his plan all along. But uh, And then I don't think it was um, – I don't know, maybe maybe a couple of years later and then, um, oh, maybe, you know, 19, 20, something like that. And okay. um, I was working in uh, Sydney CBD and we used to, Friday lunches were like a big thing to go to the pub. Like everyone from the office, we would just all go to the pub for lunch. Yep. Uh, which I loved and it introduced this whole new culture to me of going to pubs and drinking beer and, and okay. somebody bought me a schooner and I was like, oh, I don't actually... And they'd already turned away, and I was like, oh, I can't turn down a beer that's been bought for you, but yeah, sat yeah. there drinking it with the boys, and I'm like, oh, yeah, I actually, maybe I, maybe I need to acquire it. So I drank it, and then um, I went and got the next round, and, you know, now I've got two in me, and I'm, I'm drinking away, and uh, and then someone else was like, oh, yeah, well, it's my shout, and I'm thinking, oh, three schooners at lunch. All right, cool. Well, this is, must be what we do. <laughs> and so, you know, I'm a little 19-year-old. 19 year old kid going back to work after three schooners um, in a lunch break and, <laughs> and uh, having, not, not being used to drinking. Somewhat um, wobbly, I'll be. Yeah, so <laughs> that was my introduction, and um, I think it was just all downhill from then because then Friday nights we'd go out in Sydney um, until all hours and um, get pretty pissed, I suppose, at various um, locations. Some of them that aren't still around but were old favourites. But, yep. But yeah, good times. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, what were some of those old favourites? Um, there was this place called, um, you might remember it, Stu, King Henry the Ninth. Oh, it was, ta- uh, was that near the Hilton Hotel? Yeah, out the back, yeah. Then, <laughs> like, I've got an ex-girlfriend yeah. who was like five years older than me, and we were yeah. going out when I was 19, and yeah. she had, a, she was originally from Brisbane, yeah. and uh, she had a buddy, uh, and he <laughs> actually, the, he used to be like a, um, a, a wooden uh, picture, I think it was of like a cartoon of yeah. sort of uh, stylized King Henry the Eighth, and he yeah. actually stole it from the street. Yeah, and <laughs> it was last seen running down Pitt, on Pitt Street. It was right. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was yeah. on Pitt Street. It was. Yeah. Did you ever go to the Teachers Club? Uh, that was across the road or something. Teachers or Club close? was. Um, Maybe I'm thinking of Tattersalls. No. Yeah, no, you are thinking of Tattersalls. Mm. Yeah, mm. Um, but no, I haven't been. No, to the, the Teachers, Teachers Club. Club. When I first started going out, which was probably '86. 86, 80, 86, 87, I wasn't old, officially old enough, but there wasn't yeah. photo ID back then. Yeah. 
Uh, <laughs> Teachers Club was a ska venue where oh. you like they always had ska bands in. Yeah, in right. There. Okay, so oh, I don't even know oh. if it's still there anymore. Like, oh, it'd be great. I, I, yeah, I don't know. I doubt it. There was there was a funny little um, place called. Uh, uh, the Workers Club on Bridge, I think it was. It's probably okay. still there as well. That was just a dodgy little RSL type place, but it was a good place to go. I used to go to. A, I used to much prefer the the dodgy um, C. Oh, not I suppose seedy. Yep. Um, sort of pubs, but the pubs that weren't, and still to this day, like it's not your um, glossy marble topped and marble floored places. I I don't yeah. feel comfortable in those places. Ungentrified. Yeah. Like, which leading up to the Olympics. Yeah. So many pubs in Sydney just oh, yeah. like ruined, basically. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. As made they, into yeah, 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 cheap I agree. ass casino, mm. poker machine mm. places. I used to frequent one place on Crown Street called the Bentley Bar. Yeah, okay. Oh, no, I don't know that one. That was on the corner of Crown and Liverpool Street. No, what was it? Street where the where the police centre is on Goulburn Street, I think it is. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. On the corner of Goulburn and, and, and Crown Street, yeah, okay. it was like. Very rudimentary. Yeah. Um, no poker machines. A pool table out, mm. out the back with a with a um a video a couple of video games. One was Cruise in USA. Right. That was oh a, yeah, a lot an of old fun. classic. Yeah. But it was the seediest pub, and it had like a <laughs> a piece of timber that they'd at about nine thirty ten p.m. They put that over the pool table. Right. And it was like a house music venue. Yeah. And it would just be packed to the rafters. Mm. All night until like six a.m. when it closed for a, a couple of hours <laughs> before it reopened. Yeah, before, I love it. Reopened, I love before it. it reopened. <laughs> uh, like no, di- no light, no disco yeah. lights, no nothing. Yeah. It was just like yeah, this sort of seedy pit of debauchery. Is, yeah, um, is yeah, great. But oh, there's pl- plenty of good places in Sydney, and I think a lot. Uh, well, many of them have gone. Um, yeah, Occident, Like I said, the Occidental Hotel though. Yep. Um, it's yeah. It used to really be divisive as other places started opening in the area for my work colleagues people suddenly stopped oh, loving it yeah. yeah okay um but i still holds a special place in my heart that's actually where i watched speaking of the sydney olympics that's where i watched the 2000 olympics opening ceremony because um somebody had said to me that there'd be a live screening of the opening ceremony in um in the domain oh, okay so i made my way through um Martin Place and Martin Place was packed full of people. Made my way through, got to the domain. It's all in pitch black. I'm like, what? What the hell's everyone <laughs> talking about? And there's no like social media back in 2000 for you to check you know, yeah, the updates yeah, yeah. where things are. They had big screens set up in Martin Place, so that's where people are stacked watching it. Yep. And I just went, this is too, this is too packed for me. This is too crazy. So I just went all the way back to the Occidental Hotel because I knew they'd have a TV up on the wall yep, yep. and I knew I'd be able to get beer and sit there and watch it. And there was like 15 people in there. So I was like, oh, this is, this is good. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so it was a bit of fun. So did you live around the city then? Where, where, were, you, where were you living? Um, at that stage, I was... I was living in the Blue Mountains. Oh, wow. At that point, yeah. Okay, because so, it would have been a hike back at the end of the Yeah, day. and then I just happened to miss a connecting train service on the way home, got out... Um, somewhere near Emu Plains, and the tax driver said, um, oh, yep, I'm going to have to charge you an extra, um, you know, whatever it was, 50 bucks tonight. It's an Olympic surcharge. And I said, but the Olympics haven't even started. It's the opening ceremony was just tonight. You can't charge me an Olympic surcharge. Them's the rules, mate. So I had to, had to pay this stupid surcharge. There's any wonder that the Uber is taken off. Yeah, 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 that's right, that's right. And this is, this is you know, this is an hour hour from the city so it's not like as if yeah, why, yeah. why would an Olympic surcharge affect this guy well it affects his it affects his hip pocket yeah, that's right yeah. I'm well, sure he just made that up uh, okay yeah. <laughs> so speaking about houses you mm. uh, I mean the, the main thing that sort of got me triggered is like yeah I've got to get Mason here and I don't know how I found out did you put something up on yeah. social media about it on Facebook when you still had your Facebook account or um, on Instagram but you used to actually yeah, might, live on Fort Denison Fort Denison yeah. yeah Fort Denison in the middle of Sydney Harbour yeah wow I was there from um, 86 to 92 wow yeah so that, it's unbelievable to think that you know that's I, I don't even, I can't even do the maths on how long ago that was but um, <laughs> but a uh, long time ago but yeah so I was there from like um, age 8 to 14 I think it was Growing up on an island in the middle of Sydney Harbour with three brothers, it's just like the best place you could ever imagine to grow up on. Um, Keen fishermen? Yeah, well, yeah, that that was, I suppose, my introduction to fishing because, you know, the water is like literally... Out your bedroom window. Yeah, <laughs> we could walk out our lounge room 
um, door, yep. walk out, and within about two meters, throw a throw a line out. So how did and, uh, how did you come to be living there? Because it's that's kind of like an uh, mon- like isn't it like a, a, a heritage yeah. monument type thing? Yeah, yeah, it's a it's a museum and um, um, old. Old uh, military fort. Yeah. Um, my dad was working for um, what was back then called uh, the Maritime Services Board. Oh, okay. Um, and I think it's now sort of it's it's in a bit of a different form, but it's basically now waterways. But yeah, Maritime okay. Services Board did a whole bunch of other stuff back then as well. Yep. Um, and he'd been working with them for um, I think about twenty years, and um, working actually where the um, Museum of Contemporary Art is now, yep. right at Circular Key. Yeah, yeah. That was the headquarters of um, Maritime Services Board. Okay. So my dad met my mum there at the Maritime Services Board, um, and uh, he started. He got into some, he, he was in he was working in public relations, and then he somehow got into being a tour guide um, over at Fort Denison, doing like the days off for the caretakers at the time. And uh, and uh, then that he found out that that caretaker that was there, he'd been over there for like twenty odd years. He um, he was retiring soon, and he was he was going to leave. So the job became available, and uh, so my dad applied for the job to be live-in caretaker. Wow. And um, he was in the hat with um, ten other people. And um, after this big recruitment process, he got offered the job. Okay. So. Um, my dad, my mum, myself, and my three brothers were all like that was our that was our gig. We were moving over to Fort Denison, so we moved from uh, the Blue Mountains down to uh, down to Fort Denison. Had all of our um, um, household items, fridges and um, lounges and beds and stuff, put on this big barge and shipped over to Fort Denison. <laughs> wow! Got in there, and we lived in the old uh, military barracks that they had over there. Uh, which were actually quite well, quite well appointed. They, you know, they'd put in um, fresh coat of paint in all the rooms and um, and fresh carpet for us, and and uh, it was actually quite a nice place. And, and you know, um, meter thick sandstone walls, so okay, kept it nice and cool during summer, nice and warm during winter. Eighty eighty seven, eighty eight. There was some sort of renovations going on there because I had a friend who was a stonemason that oh, used to. Yeah, yeah, right. He said, yeah. "Oh, yeah, I've been working at <laughs> I've been working at Fort Denison." Yeah, yeah. Mm. There was always uh, renovations going on because um, just the the sea air and yeah, the, and yeah, the okay. water just is always constantly eroding the the sandstone. Yep. So they're always having to replace bricks over there. Okay. But the best thing about that sort of stuff was they'd put up scaffolding all around different parts of the building, and then of course the stone stonemasons would go home at the end of the day and us four boys would be like sweet we've got a whole play and, and my parents I don't think they either didn't know or they didn't they so didn't care you mean to tell me you were climbing around a build, <laughs> building site scaffolding yeah. without wearing high vis oh it was, it was brilliant yes yeah, sw- I can't Some believe sw- sw- yeah, no, <laughs> swinging off bars and you know over four meter drops and things like this and, uh, and having a great time climbing up it, cl- it must have gone up sometimes you know three or four meters up into the air some of these some of these things, which, uh, which I'll bet your dad knew my dad because my dad worked at Sydney Water Police. Which yeah, is I remember you right saying in there that. And at, and Hickson Road, like, yeah, sort of basically, yeah, directly, directly across from the Opera House. If you if you look yeah. towards the Harbour Bridge, it was sort of almost underneath one pot, uh, like yeah. sort of in front of the pylon, yeah, for the Harbour Bridge. Yeah, and at one point, Dad, like Dad, used to bring home all sorts of weird shit. Like, yeah. Televisions and surfboards that he found floating around in the harbour. He didn't bring hands. them home, but <laughs> like, yeah, he fished a few of them out. Yeah, right. Um, okay. But one time he brought home, you know, one of those like life buoys. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That was that had MSB. Yeah. On okay. It. Like, Maritime Service. Stole it off your there dad. You go. Right. <laughs> like, right. Yeah. <laughs> but, That'd yeah, be a collector's item now. It would be, and you know, like I was couch surfing. Uh, Mid nineties yeah. at a house in Tamarama. Yeah. And um like I just you know, back when you're sort of in your twenties you can fit everything that you have in a in a in a station wagon yeah. sort of thing. And yeah. Yeah. So I sort of had everything that I had there and, and that was one of the things and it oh. really suited the house and I didn't like, oh, grab it when I left. Man. And now I live the coastal lifestyle. Yeah, I really wish perfect. I still had yeah. that thing. <laughs> um but yeah, I'm sure that he knew your dad because my dad always had to be calling the um, water police. Water police for something. Okay, yeah, cool. for different things. People trying to um, get onto the island at night, and we'd often be woken up by our alarm going off. We had these like um, 
which was quite high tech, I think, back for the late eighties, early nineties, was like motion detector. Oh wow! Um, okay. You know, or you know, you know those in movies where you see like it's got a red line yeah, that runs yeah, across, yeah, and they yeah. sprinkle the talcum powder over it, yeah, whatever, yeah, so yeah. they can see where the line is. So the it was like them is. running, yeah. Okay. It was like them running across the whole length of the island. Right. So anytime, and birds would set it off and everything, of course, as well. But occasionally, people would just turn up in the middle of the night and just go, "Hey, can we just come out here and have finish our drinks?" And my dad would always be out there and say, "No, I'm sorry, you got to leave and get okay. back on the boat." And we did a thing on Shark Island one night where we just. Yeah, went to Shark Island. Yeah, like, <laughs> just was, to hang, just to a, hang out. A friend of a friend. I think yeah. there might have been psychedelics involved again. <laughs> um, but yeah, it, so we well, had, it was down near Rose Bay. I think. Yeah, we yeah, had to yeah, get on. Yeah, and, yeah. That's oh. actually where I proposed to my wife on Shark Island. Funny oh, enough. Okay. Yeah, because yeah, because wow. Fort Tennyson was too expensive to get over to. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I, I think you got a better chance of um of getting away with it over in Shark Island because there was no living caretaker and, and you could just turn up. I'm and... sure you'd have Buckley's chance of getting away with it anywhere now. Yeah, I reckon so too. There'd be like, massive spotlights and yeah. CCTV. and Everywhere, yeah. 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 It's, um, <laughs> it's a bit of a shame. So how did you get around? Like, did you guys, did you and your brother have like a little runabout that would take you to the... Um, well, yeah, we did. We had a little um, tinny that I think my older brothers, they went and pitched in half each four or whatever okay. and we had that so we could just do like little little trips joy rides around the place but yep. but what about um, like say going to school how did you yeah how, so how was that yeah well back then uh, maritime services board had a whole fleet of launches that they would use to ferry their staff all around the harbor okay so um uh, wharf wharf building um technicians um you know all these other painters yep. and people that you know n- these days are just like uh, contractors, I suppose, independent contractors, they all worked for Maritime Services Board. Okay. So, um, and all these launches were stationed at um, Goat Island on the other side of the Harbour Bridge. And so we'd just have our um, our school runs booked in. We'd have, you know, pick us up at 8 o'clock in the morning, okay. um, pick us up over at uh, Milsons Point at 4 o'clock in the afternoon, um, and we'd sort of stick to those. So you went to school on the north side then, yeah? Yeah, it was okay. sort of the. Um, <clears throat> I, I guess it the was sort of the, that all the kids that lived on the Sydney Harbour Islands went to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think it was sort of the closest school to the island. We sort of okay. went, and I think it was also um, the previous people that had stayed, the Morrisons that had lived on Fort Denison, their kids had gone to Milsons. So I went to Milsons Point Public School, which is was closed down because the state government um, at the time in early nineties said that you know there weren't enough kids we only had 60 kids when i was there at this school for like an inner city wow. public school which is incredible but now what's interesting is that uh, this is off completely off topic but um is that i read this article where there's all these reports now saying that in hindsight that was the worst decision they could have ever done was close yeah. all these all these little public schools so close to the city because now all the schools are so overcrowded yeah, yeah, okay. um that if only they'd kept some of them open. And back in those days, they wouldn't have been like they wouldn't have necessarily been, um, for want of a better term, rich people's schools because there was yeah. quite a lot of yeah. housing, like yeah. housing department houses, like yeah, there, definitely, down, definitely, around yeah. Nelson's Point, yeah, and, and, yeah. and yeah, around and, the rocks, and and I think that. that's really good uh, for me growing up because um, even though we're in like this really prestigious place when you think about it, Fort Denison, I grew up with no kind of airs or anything like that about me. Yeah, yeah, because okay. I wasn't growing up around rich people. I wasn't. Um, you know, I didn't. I didn't feel like a rich kid. I was going to school with, yeah, housing commission kids and and a lot of kids that would only be at the school for like a month before they would just randomly disappear. I'm not quite sure what happened. <laughs> in Some cases, but um, we don't want to live in these crazy yeah. little brick <laughs> places in the city. We yeah. want to get out, Campbell yeah. Town, yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> where there's right. space. <laughs> that's it. Yeah, and even uh, you know, after I left uh, Milson's Point public school i went to crow's nest boys high school which also closed down um because of you know not enough kids and and i think um i think sydney girls school no north sydney girls has taken over that space now but um uh, even then like this was crow's nest boys high school was considered one of the roughest schools in sydney there's always someone getting carted away in an ambulance every week because of fights in the playground and and, uh, and i got into a few random fights people just um you know picking on me and stuff and and um uh, and as I think everyone did, you couldn't avoid getting into a fight at this at this boys' school. And um, so 
I think even that like helped keep me pretty well grounded, grounded all that sort of yeah, stuff. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but good fun. Did you um like we did you so I oh okay, if MSB picked you up I was gonna I just sort of had it in my head, you know, I could see you just like jumping in the tinny and somehow yeah, driving yeah. over to the shore and yeah. trotting off to school. Yeah. But yeah. Well as So like if you went if you and your mum and your dad and everybody mm. went out mm. Would you would you go would you go to the mainland <laughs> in the tinny and and park it somewhere and then jump in the car? Is that um, how it worked? Like, did you... Nah, not really. No, because because we didn't we we did have a car. We had it yep. um, over at um, Walsh Bay. Okay, um, which um, was back then was like all these old um, warehouse spaces that were most of them were abandoned and it was yep. a horrible place that. We sort of felt unsafe every time we were over there. Now it's all glitzy, um, yeah, you know, yeah, finger yeah. wharves and yep. you know, million dollar apartments and stuff. But back then it was all it was all quite gritty and dirty and and uh, but we loved it. We had a car that we parked over there in a garage that was massive barn doors that were tied up with a big um, padlock and and chain. Okay. And we would we'd have to arrange uh, pickups from the Maritimes launches. Yeah. Um, we'd have to give them. It was always difficult. I think for my parents because we'd have to arrange stuff pretty well in advance so okay. they can fit it into their schedule. I don't know what else they were doing. These some of these boat drivers that were driving us around, like apart from just waiting for for drives because they'd work twenty four seven. These these drivers, oh, okay. but it was always like, oh well, we can't get over there for you know three or four hours or whatever. And we're like, well, where, where are you? Like, what are you doing? <laughs> so you know, we'd have to often arrange things like a week in advance or something. Say next next Saturday we want to be picked up at three o'clock yeah, in the afternoon yeah. can we be picked up at three o'clock in the afternoon it was never guaranteed and then we want to come home at 10 o'clock is it going to be doable then we'd have to wait a few days for them to get back to us and let us know whether it was even doable so did you ever use the act that they used to be like cat uh water taxis yeah well what happened was as the i know a lot of water police used to moonlight as water taxi <laughs> okay right that makes sense <laughs> um uh, as the uh, Maritime Services Board started losing funding, um, they um, they said to us, "Okay, we're we're scrapping our launches now. We're putting we're laying off all of our drivers as yep. well. Um, so you're going to have to get water taxis now. We're going to we're going to pay the pay the bill." Maritime it's Services Board. Expensive. Yeah, water damn taxis. expensive. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I don't know whether it justified the layoff of all these all these blokes, but um, uh, they just said, "Yeah, get water taxis, organise them whenever you want." And just you know, they'll bill us sort of thing each time. So it actually made things a bit easier a bit for bit us because yeah, okay. we could book them pretty much whenever we wanted them. They were fast jet boats that would cruise across the harbour, and we'd get places a lot quicker. Okay. Um, so like instead of getting from um, Fort Denison to um, Jeffrey Street Wharf over at Nilsons Point, it might take fifteen to twenty minutes in a maritime launch. It'd be five minutes in a water taxi. Wow. So yeah, it was it was. For us, it was great. We're yeah, like, yeah. Bring it on. Okay. Oh, I guess for the people who used those boats to get a, like in the same capacity as you did, it was probably yeah. for the better. Yeah. They got rid of them. Like, yeah. Poor dudes that were employed, though. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. A lot of people yeah. losing their jobs there, but yeah. yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. God, man, this is uh, it's it's awesome to find out some of these details. It was. Like, a, I've all, I've wondered since I first found yeah, out, like, yeah. that you. It was yeah. a damn cool place to grow up on. Yeah. It was just a very cool place. I've got such good memories of that and. Um, of just city life in general, like yeah. just really, because moving from um, Blue Mountains to suddenly right into the heart of the city, yeah. suddenly I'm like, man, this is so cool. And just like walking out your front door and like looking up there, seeing the Harbour Bridge, yeah. looking over there, seeing the opera houses, just yeah. like, people, yeah, people come across the world and pay thousands of dollars yeah. just to come and see this. Yeah. It's like, yeah, I used to love like when I lived in around the city, I would regularly mm -hmm. um, do like midnight walks across the harbour bridge yeah, just nice. because it was it was there and yeah i had a buddy um I, I met a dude from the states who came into the, the surplus store that i worked in yeah in the city back then and um, yeah. we ended up becoming good friends and he stayed he was coming over to, to live and he ended up staying for six months um but two nights before he left we did a walk across the harbour bridge oh nice and um walked down to luna park and I, for some reason, I had a Polaroid camera. I don't, yeah. like, <laughs> even then, it was even very much a post-Polaroid camera right, era. Right, it was yeah. probably about 96 or something yeah, okay, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, yeah, we got this, we, we just bailed up this man and lady down that were down near uh, 
<laughs> Luna Park. Can you take a photo of us? <laughs> and yeah, and, and she ended up taking two, like one each. I wouldn't know where they are now. But were you ever one of those people that um, climbed across the um, the arch of the Harbour Bridge? I've heard heard no. people that have climbed the fences and gone up to the arch before. Before, before now, where there's all the tours, security yeah. and tours and stuff. And, and it would have been well doable back then. Again, no yeah. CCTV or yeah. anything like that. Yeah. You would have been able to do it unless somebody saw you. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, I never did. Like I, I, I went to a once or twice. I went. To, I walked across the middle. Of the, I walked across the Harbour Bridge at like four thirty in the morning one day. Yeah. And I was and I was like, wow, this. Is, I, I think I went to a rave party at right. The, uh, <laughs> At the um, there used to be like rides down at Darling Harbour. There was like a fun oh, yeah, park I sort of that. thing, yeah. And it was there. And about f- five o'clock, it got closed down. Mm. And um, I was like, "Oh, jeez, what am I going to do now?" And mm. Again, I think there were m- might have been psychedelics on board. Yeah. It's like, oh my god, like what am I going to do? Like, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to walk across the Harbour Bridge. So yeah, like, I walk from <laughs> Darling Harbour to to walk across the Harbour Bridge yeah. and, and back. And um, oh wow. Yeah, that sort of inspired me seeing the sun mm. come up, and then like when I met my that daughter's, would have been cool. Yeah, when I met my daughter's mum, yeah, I think we went out to a, again another rave party. I think it was in St. J- St. James Railway Station in the yeah, spare. Right. They've got like a whole series of spare platforms down there. That oh was, yeah, so you're inside like one of the disused. Yeah, it was. There used to be an arm um, clothing shop called Hound Dog. Yeah, in Sydney, and it was put on by them. And, <laughs> and then it's like, come on, let's walk across the Harbour Bridge. But this time I had a video camera and we, yeah, yeah we walked across the Harbour Bridge sort of videoing stuff and then like, that's very got cool. home and went to have a look at the video and the video I thought I was taking, I didn't take. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> it didn't work. It just did completely. Well, that was going to be my next question. You still got that footage. That'd yeah, be incredible. No, no, okay. no the, footi- the footage that I thought was going to exist never actually ended up existing. It was just, we were a bit, yeah, we weren't kind of, on the ball, so to speak. I love it. I love it. <laughs> but yeah, no, it was. Um, I don't know. Yeah, it just it used to thrill me, like living so close to this place yeah. where people would come. To, yeah, like especially come to, to yeah. check out. Like, yeah, it's um. Yeah, I and I, I don't think I ever. I never took it for granted as well. Yeah, living right there every day, I would wake up and just my brothers or I would just remind ourselves regularly. We'd be like, "How lucky are we?" Yeah. to be living here, like in the middle of Sydney, where six people out of how many millions around us that don't and, have this opportunity. And just think about, like, it, it, since since colonisation, mm. like you would probably be in a in a group of maybe maybe 100 people. Yeah, yeah. Like that, that, have, that yeah. have ever lived there. Like that's, yeah. that's a pretty select sort yeah, of... Yeah, that's, that's, you're right. That's yeah. very, very... That, that makes it even more yeah. amazing. I think, think it was like, like their first jail wasn't it like they used to dump um, guys on no no well no it's sort of um that's a bit of a like a misconception i suppose okay. about um fort denison because um when it was just a rocky pyramid shaped outcrop yep um they sent a few con- convicts over there as like their sentence they strung them up over there you oh, know, okay. as a bit of a warning to the rest of the colony yep um and then they started then then i think it was like the oh my dad or um, correct me on any of this, but um, the I think the Crimean War was kicking off, and so the the um, the government at the time said we need to build a fort here to protect Sydney Harbour and protect oh, the okay. the areas. So they started, um, you know, building this military fort. Yep. Um, what was weird was that they cut down all the sandstone that was in the pyramid shaped thing to yep. remove it. Then they had to ship in other sandstone from other, you know, places Probably across the harbour. Piermont, was it? Like that's, um, I think they had a big quarry at Piermont that yeah, they got most of Piermont, Sydney's there was one, sandstone um, from. I can't even think of it. It's, it's, it's right close there um, to near Fort Dennis. It's sort of in between Neutral Bay and um, and the zoo sort of area. Oh, okay. Um, all right. That's where they got most of it, but that's where they that's where they got all the sandstone. Started building the fort, um, and then no convicts were ever actually taken there and imprisoned there. So it was okay. it was set up purely for this military function. So have you seen uh, a couple of weeks ago? And it was what pushed yeah. you into into my forefront <laughs> was there was a, a movie that was made like in the fifties or yeah. something. The Siege yeah. of Pinch Guard yeah. was on telly. Yeah, yeah, and. Have you seen that? Yeah, it's a great so, movie. So, like, you look at it going, oh, my God, like, great I can't movie. believe it. Like, yeah, that, yeah. That's where we used to walk. Yeah. Type you know about. what? We, we watched it as a family, and we sit there picking it to pieces because we go, ah, oh, that that's not through that door. 
That's not, ah, okay. that door would be, you know, that would be your bedroom, but that's not, that's, that must be the studio. So, okay, so. so the indoor scenes weren't all inside at... No, some okay. of them were sort of made up, but I mean, look, you know, that's just, yeah, that's I mean, just being nitpicky, but, us, us, you know, picking it apart, but it's a, it's a good fun movie and uh, the outside scenes were like, ah, oh, look at that, that's yeah, so yeah. cool. Man, it was a different, like, the Sydney skyline back then was so different. Yeah, right? yeah, oh yeah. Yeah. It's just yeah. like the AWA Tower was the tallest building. Yeah, yeah. Like, it yeah. Just, yeah, it's just amazing. I think that was even before like the Opera House and stuff, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, maybe they just started. Because right. it took them ages to build the Opera House. Yeah, yeah it took them like, it took like 15 years or something like that. Like some ridiculous I think it took them longer the than the Sydney, Sydney Harbour Bridge. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> maybe. So could were you living there when they were boring the tunnel underneath the harbour? Yeah, yeah. Could you feel we were. that? Could you uh, feel that? I don't quite remember. Um, yeah, I don't. I don't know. It's amazing. They just don't build infrastructure like they used to. Like they built that Sydney Harbour Bridge in what nineteen thirty-two or yeah. something. They opened it. Yeah, and they didn't need to like do anything. They didn't need to add to it in any yeah. way, shape, or form for like. Yeah. 60, 70 years. Yeah. Like, yeah. they built the Harbour Bridge with like eight lanes of traffic. Yeah. At the time, two lanes of trams. Yeah. Trains. Yeah. Pedestrians. In a time when we had no money. Yeah. Like, in yeah. The, during the Depression. Yeah. And it lasted that long. So, like, now they build a road, and two years later, after the road's open for the first time, they have to upgrade it. Like, yeah, because they just it, don't build for the future. It's, they, so, it's so true. I, I, um, what amazing foresight for, for yeah. those. Um, planners back then to to yeah, make yeah. something that is so massive. You're quite right, and it's at a, at a time too when mm. they when money was kind of tight. Like yeah. you, you would have thought, okay, well let's yeah. let's build the cheapest bridge we possibly yeah. can because we really do need to get from one side of the yeah, and city let's, let's to just the put other. one one tram track and one train track and yeah. and two lanes of traffic. They yeah. could have quite easily done that. Yeah, it's 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 amazing that they um it's amazing that they. And so I wonder when they got rid of the trams. Did that provide more room for the tr- for traffic? Because you see some of those pictures of early days on the Hubbard Bridge, and there's like mm. six cars. Yeah, and the guys collecting yeah. tolls. There's, they've got no buildings. They've just got yeah. this like concrete island with a pole, I guess, with a yeah. light on top that they would just yeah. stand there. Yeah, or where they're taking the money. Like it's ridiculous. It's like an honesty bucket. Yeah, yeah. as you go past. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I don't know, but you know. Um. I was just talking to someone the other day about um, different memories about um, about Sydney and stuff, and I still remember, it must have been late 80s when we were living at Fort Denison, is walking across the Harbour Bridge with like a school group or something yep. to walk into the CBD. So we're walking from north to south, yep. and as we're going down the ramp that leaves the Harbour Bridge, the pedestrian walkway that leaves yeah, the Harbour yeah. Bridge, off to the side there, underneath the road there, was an old um, shooting gallery. Yes. There was the a... cops used to use yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just think that's astonishing yeah, that there yeah. was, a, sh- there was a, a, a live ammunition <laughs> shooting gallery in the heart of the CBD. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I wonder, what they, I wonder what that is now. I wonder if it's just... Because clo- there's quite a bit that's just closed off now. Yeah. There's like a few, quite a few yeah. old public toilets and things like that yeah. in, in the area where they're just, they're just not open anymore. They're yeah, they just, just sealed them off. They're permanently closed. And, and, yeah. Yeah, like uh, there's one at Taylor Square. Where that goes down, that goes downstairs, like oh, a, right. a downstairs toilet, and that's yeah, that's all closed off now. Oh man, yeah, you you, you want to know what's down there? Well, going back to St James, like what I was apparently yeah. I read recently that they're planning on opening up like a shopping boulevard or something. Yeah, I read down that too. In, in, yeah, in the spare yeah, tunnel. yeah. Like, oh god, that's yeah. stale air. That's yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sure that'll be a consideration. They will need though. to be pumping quite a lot of. Fresh air down there. Yeah, but. you'd like to think so, surely. So, <laughs> you used to also be on the radio in Bondi, yeah? No, it, no. I thought you no. were on Bondi radio. No, I did. Um, I did a little stint with um, uh, oh, two two triple R, two triple R, which was out at uh, North Ride. Oh, yeah. okay. My yeah. dad was on there. Oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> another oh. another weird connection. Yeah, God, that is weird. Yeah. Six degrees of separation, two yeah. degrees. In. Okay, so um, you did that with your mate Adam. Adam. Yeah, okay, yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. yeah. Um, why, yes. why did I think it was Bondi? I, I don't um, oh, it's I don't know. know. It's close to the city, kind of. Yeah, <laughs> kind of in a roundabout kind of way. Yeah, uh, it's in Sydney. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, close enough. 
Yeah, so that was our, our sort of our first introduction to community radio. And, okay. like, yeah, that's where I sort of got a, a love for wanting to do um, more community radio work. And Yep. Um, yeah. And the, and the social media, you're a big tweeter? Yeah, I love my, uh, love my tweets. Um, it feels like that's the social media platform that's, like, the one that's not getting as much attention as all the others. Okay. Like, you know, Facebook and Instagram, I think, has a lot more prestige about it. Okay. And then I feel like Twitter, um, I don't know. I still use it. Everybody seems to use Twitter, though. Yeah, there's, uh, yeah I guess, like, like, a lot of... Um, a lot of celebrities and stuff will use it. Yeah. I, I think I've got like you know a hundred followers or something, which is okay. You know, Tony Martin it's, is one of them. I can remember your glory. Like your, he uh, he accidentally followed me for oh, about, he, accidentally? he accidentally followed me for about an hour. I realised his mistake and then unfollowed. So oh, just, <laughs> I had a I had my uh, I had an encounter yesterday with um you know that journalist J- Joe Hildebrand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw this picture on social media. Yeah. And at first, I thought it was Joe Joe Hildebrand. Yeah. And, um, it turned out that it wasn't. It was just some dude. And I was, God, that looks like Joe Hildebrand in the future. Yeah. So I tweeted it yeah. to him. Uh, See, I didn't even know you were on Twitter. Uh, well, I, I hardly ever use it. Like yeah. i I think I um, I think I started it on my forty fifth birthday. Right. Okay. Um, as like a special. Happy yeah. It was like to now me. I'm turning forty five. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm going to start <laughs> tweeting on Twitter. I'm gonna get into this young kid's caper. Joe Hildebrand, you have a doppelganger of your future se- of your future self. <laughs> that does look like him, and he liked it. <laughs> <laughs> that does look like him. So that's that. I'll pay that too. Yeah, I, if I put when I put my things on Instagram for, yeah. for my radio show and for this, yeah. I always link a Twitter. Like that, I've been uh, using okay. Twitter more yeah. since I've been doing Instagram, yeah. but I haven't. It's always been like also post to Twitter, not specifically posting to Twitter. So yeah, right. Was the first one. Yeah, right. But um, yeah. On Man, there's some classic. Inst- Are you? Do you follow um, Steve Jones, the guitarist from the Sex Pistols? No. On Instagram, man, no. he's fucking hilarious. <laughs> like, he ha- I'll have to look him up. Oh, I've mate. always, I've always taken good suggestions. He, he has no, sh- well, he has no shame. Mm. But that's, a, he's entitled to have no shame. He's yeah. like, he's, he'll take the piss out of himself. Like mm. the amount of pictures of, like the amount of like little videos of him playing playing guitar in his undies in his bathroom because right. he likes the acoustics right <laughs> or dancing in his undies in his bathroom or like yeah. some, then he'll, he he he's got like a uh, silver space suit and platform boots that he's had made specially made that like he's fucking hilarious man like he's <laughs> okay. one that I'll right, I'm sold I'm sold out. I'm going to look yeah. him up <laughs> um I also follow Steve Kilby from the church yeah on Instagram yeah. he actually he's the first person who acknowledged my presence right one day uh Oh God! What? Oh, he put a selfie of himself sitting on a plane, and there was a dude in the background pulling some sort of weird face. And I made the comment, like, "What's the story with the dude in the background?" And he was like, "Oh my God, I didn't like." And he, yeah, and he commented back, "I was like, oh my God, Steve Kilby." <laughs> that's pretty cool. Yeah, I think that that's incredible, isn't it? The whole I think about that often is the way that we can actually interact with some of these people that we idolize and love and whatever else. Yeah, and you know, back in the day. Um, we'd, it'd be like, you know, send off a, a stamp self-addressed envelope to maybe yeah. to a fan club or to their yeah. address and you're never going to hear from them. Yeah, yeah. Um, and also it's not that immediate. Now we can actually interact with some of these people that we love and sometimes get an, like that, get an immediate response, which is just mind-blowing. Yeah. Actually, the first time it ever happened to me happened with um, Perry Farrell yeah, from right. Jane's Addiction on, yeah. on Facebook. Yeah, what, was, what, did, what did that uh, involve? He, he, he hardly ever posts on Facebook anymore. In fact, I never see him on any social media anymore. You might have been the catalyst for him to leave. <laughs> <laughs> what was the... But he's saying something about, I love DJing and taking the crowd on a journey and blah, 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 and yeah. this, that, and the other. I'm like... And I, I commented, man, like, I've been DJing a fair bit for a while. I've got a friend who who's always played in covers bands. And I've kind of come to the conclusion that DJing is kind of like one step underneath playing in a covers band because at least, <laughs> at least in a covers band you've got to learn how to play the songs. <laughs> and his answer was like, "No, nah, man, you've got to make your own tracks and use them." I was like, "Oh my god, very <laughs> cool." <laughs> that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's but pretty cool. Yeah, no, that was um, God. Uh, yeah. Wow. Oh, I shouldn't. Have, oh, I, I love it. Oh, here I am thinking yesterday's exper- yesterday's encounter with Joe Hildebrand was my. Uh, yeah, it was your biggest and mightiest? Yeah, you've yeah. had you've had plenty of big ones. Yeah, no, I've had yeah, I've yeah. had like three that I can think of. I've off got the top um, of my head. I've got um, Tom Cruise 
the official Tom Cruise that follows me on um, Twitter. He follows about 25,000 people, admittedly. He's the, but he's, he's got the sort of dude who would follow anybody. Yeah, yeah. He's got, he's got, I think he's got 15 million followers, but he follows about 24 or 240,000 people. So it's a lot of people. So I'm like one of 240,000, and I don't think it's actually him that posts things up, but it's okay. like the official verified account of yep. Tom Cruise. So okay. I feel pretty special about that. He likes people. <laughs> Yeah, he loves That's, people. Like, he he, does. He, yeah. Anytime I see an interview with him, and like, yeah, he'll sort of give this really yeah. considered sort of look. Yeah, I like people. Yeah. I like observing people. I like looking at people. I like talking to people. <laughs> He'd be yeah. getting stacks very from, from my account. Very personable. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, so, um, what well, you know? What are you liking at the moment? What's yeah, he watching? What are you, are you a Netflix guy? Uh, yeah, I am. Netflix, Stan. Um, um, I don't know. I, I, I loved um, the uh, Better Call Saul series that okay. followed on from Breaking Bad. I sort of think about some dude in, the, in Better Call Saul who's only got one arm. Uh, one of the actors. Oh, right. And he, oh, God. And, it, and, and he... He actually cut his own arm off because he was suffering from depression. He, oh, it was like right, I hadn't a read symptom that. symptom of his depression. Oh, that's pretty pretty hardcore. Save hadn't. that. It's, um, yeah, yeah uh, I don't know. Maybe... Mm. Or maybe I just completely but, uh, read it wrong. Yeah. <laughs> which is not which is not beyond all realms of plausibility. Um, <laughs> um, da, 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 da. Uh, maybe I didn't... Oh, no, I... I saw it on a news thing, and I saved it to my desktop. Better Call Saul, Insider. Better Call Saul actor Todd La Tourette says he cut off his own arm and lied about being a veteran. Okay. I don't recognise him, though. I don't think he's one of the main... Okay. I... I'll have to look up. I haven't watched it. I ha- yeah. Did you watch Breaking Bad? Yeah, yeah. I didn't watch Breaking oh, Bad. I've man. never seen an episode of Breaking s- Bad. Gotta see Breaking Bad. If there's one show that I can recommend to anyone, okay, it's Breaking Bad. It's uh, it's to me, it's the best drama series ever created. Wow, I think it's okay. just insanely good. Maybe I'm going to have to finally. Yeah, it's watch um. It. <laughs> yeah, I think like um. Did you like Stranger Things? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought that was great. Yeah. Was what about good. the end of the fucking world? Uh, yeah, that, that was one? good. That was yeah. very good. Yeah. My niece suggested that one. Yeah, to me that was good. Was like, Check There's it. plenty of good stuff, isn't there? At yeah, the moment? yeah. Like N- none of it's on free to wear. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like, I hardly even watch free to air at all. It's like, in fact, I know. I'm, since I'm, my <laughs> since my Foxtel app's been marking up, I almost exclusively watch YouTube. Yeah, and I'm almost exclusively watching podcasts. Yeah. Um, um, do you watch any podcast or listen? To- yeah, I listen to heaps of podcasts. I'm always listening to podcasts. I just love them. Um, I listen to um, um, Tony Martin's Sizzle Town. Okay. Um, Dave O'Neill's. Um, what's it called? Dave O'Neill. Uh, anyway, he's got he's yeah. got one where he talks to comedians uh, on their way home from gigs in the in his car, which is oh, really wow. good. That's a good idea. Yeah. Uh, there's this podcast I listen to called Sitcom Geeks where they dissect sitcoms okay. which is kind of cool I don't listen to any Australian ones yeah oh, right okay yeah, I, like yeah. I watch well there's so much to choose from isn't I there I watch Joe Rogan yeah I don't like he um, he's the guy he used to host that show Fear Factor oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah and he was yeah. also on news radio yeah right uh, and he also is a big one in the UFC he's like a UFC commentator yeah, okay yeah right um and there's this other guy that I've just started watching or listening to, Ari Shafir. Yeah. Who's, um, a, and then another one, um, Joey, Joey Diaz. And they're all, they're all comedians. They're yeah. all these American comedians. And they, I was watching one last night where he was talking about how they, they're all podcasting. Yeah. They're all supporting each other. They all go on each other's podcasts. Yeah. And like the stand up comedy in the, in the States is like they're selling out like 10,000 or, Person yeah, arenas, right? Okay, so it's had a like, direct. It, it's flow having on. this, yeah. It's having this real massive flow on effect, and man, everyone's feeling the feeling the love. That's from massive amounts of people, like basically doing these rock concert size yeah. stand up oh, routines, man. And, love it. And they're doing these Netflix half hour and one hour Netflix specials, yeah, where they've got free creative control to say and do whatever they want because, yeah. like, they're not restricted by yeah, yeah, by networks having these commercial strict, networks yeah. and things like yeah. that, and um. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, cool. Love it. Hopefully, yeah. I don't know. I don't aspire to 
to anything really in my life. <laughs> <laughs> Except for surviving but, today. Yeah, well, but if, hey, look, like I said, if, if we can get these podcasts that you're doing up onto uh, iTunes. Yeah, yeah, bring yeah. It on. Well, look, you're not the first person to say it. Like my, my friend's girlfriend who she listens to a lot of podcasts, she's saying mm. you've got to get onto a podcast service because yeah. unless people subscribe to your, uh, sorry, unless people pay for premium YouTube, yeah. they can't listen to you unless they're using their data. Yeah. Which, yeah. You need to use the same amount of data to download it anyway, so I don't... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't yeah. see what the difference is. Yeah. But I guess uh, when you're at home, you can use your home Wi-Fi and download yeah. it that way rather than use your data off your yeah. mobile plan. But, um, yeah. but I know you've got to go and get your shopping before I 12. Do. Isn't, and that, isn't that a two. sad excuse that I've got to... <laughs> I've got to what, what are you doing today, Mason? I'm picking up my shopping. That's the highlight of my day. You're a cyber shopper. Yeah. You order yours and then go and pick it up. Is that yeah, what you mean? What is yeah. it? Click and collect. Click and collect, yeah. I've never tried that. <laughs> It's it's quite handy. It means you don't have to really get out of your car. And I guess there's no sort of um, what do you call them? Impulse buys. Yeah, going on. Yeah, yeah which yeah. is good. And it, funny enough, that is saving me a lot of money. Yeah. So. Wow. Okay. Hmm. So um, I think it's good. All right. We'll, we'll wrap it up. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Stu. Hell Thanks for, for having being me. Here. No, I, we'll have to get you back definitely again because um. Oh yeah. well, I would love to be back if you can. If we can think of more things to talk about from me, I'd love to be back. But thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah. No worries, man. Okay. All right. Take it easy. All right. This is Stu with the Hellcat. Back in the day. See you next time. Or you'll hear us next time. Or hear me. Or whatever. Bye. Okay, this is Stu. We're going back.